Hi, this is a video response to Rocky Mysteries video, which was, I suppose, a response to mine. I wish he had uh, posted it as a direct video response, I would have put it up. And thus, I only just now, literally for about a half an hour ago, 40 minutes ago, became aware of it. Uh, there's quite a lot of stuff to cover here. And uh, one thing is very clear uh, within the MRA that there is a very, very clear division along lines of thought regarding, well, quite frankly, regarding women. Um, our relationship as men to women, and obviously the possibility of having a relationship with a woman, which is something which I discount. There are several issues and points I'd like to touch on uh, coming from his video. Now, perhaps I'm misinterpreting this, but the, my understanding of what he was suggesting was that, and I have been called <laughs> the most extreme MRI, that's kind of surprising, that uh, without actually naming names, but the implication was that I am kind of looking at things in a one-sided way, akin to the way feminists look at things. And, you know, if you have a good scientific theory, such as the theories behind evolutionary psychology, you can't just take cherry-pick. Um, I don't recall ever cherry-picking. Uh, so let's, let's go through the, the tried-and-true the tried and true uh, notions of evolutionary psychology. Yes, we men and I too are primarily interested in women because of their youth, beauty, and fertility so on and so forth, and we pay for those goods through our resources, uh, work, uh, and money, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm fully aware of these things. These things are self-evident to most of my viewers, I suspect. They're self-evident. They're <laughs> evident. I'm aware of that as well, so I don't think I'm being one-sided. Specifically, I want to talk about this notion of reciprocal altruism, which is very, very true. Everything is a trade at the end of the day. Or as my ex, one of my exes famously said, uh, you do the, the cost-benefit analysis and you, know, you find out what the results of that are. And then, depending on what those, the, the, those results are, uh, you disassociate or you do not, uh, something to that effect. The, the problem I see with arguing that I'm being one-sided uh, and I'm just being extreme and only representing one view and so on and so forth and some of the commentators who like this video his video seem to agree with him is the following reciprocal altruism is good and it is the basis of virtually every human relationship not just romantic relationships around. So in essence is a kind of biz business relationship. But at one, what, what point in time, dare I ask, is this reciprocal altruism enough? How much investment do you need to put into a person such that when you are no longer capable of bringing something to the table or providing, when the only thing you have left is your personal hidden humanity, how much, how much do you need to invest in the reciproc reciprocally altru altruistic relationship until you actually get something back. Because let's remember three. Three, uh, point three of brief was love, or rather the corollary, corollary three, stated, a promise of future benefit has limited influence on current future association, with the influence inversely proportioned to the length of time until the benefit will be given and directly proportioned to the degree which the female trusts the male. And corollary two, probably should have done corollary two first. Any agreement where the male provides a current benefit in return for a promise of future association is null and void as soon as the male has provided the benefit. Well, there are many cases when a man can fall ill, he's no longer capable of uh, providing the bread and giving the woman all the goodies. Um, and I suppose 
in a recipro reciprocally altruistic relationship, it's the woman's good right to discard him because he can no longer uh, do what's required of him. Isn't that how that works? Um, another point I'd like to stress is I can only speak from my experience my friend's experience, but there is something more to human, at least male friendships. I don't know if human relationships is too general, and then I'd be speaking about female male relationships. That's, I don't think it's applicable. Wherein uh, we, we can recognize a person's good nature, maybe he's just affable, whatever, and value him for that, not just for what he does or what he brings to the table. Certainly, in the beginning stages, there is that trade-off, the altruistic, in the, the cost-benefit trade-off. But the question that, bought, that, that I am preoccupied with is, how much do you have to give until it's recognized, until you can take either a little rest, which you're probably entitled to if you've been working your ass off to provide for your spouse or your, your female partner. Or what if you fall ill? I mean, I've had numerous experiences with when I felt I had fallen ill, excess either totally discarding me, ignoring me, and so on and so forth. I think one of the interesting things about Miguel is that, sorry, men go in their own, men go in their own way. MGT, MGT, uh, THO, W, um, is that it's pretty much empirical. It's based on an individual experience, empirical. But also the experiences of our surrounding males, friends. For example, I learned firsthand many years back about the evils of divorce through an older chum of mine. His wife had cheated on him. And she filed for divorce and she got most everything. He also she also poisoned the relationship to the daughter and so on and so forth. These kinds of things. I learned from others as well, in addition to my own experiences. I'm certainly not being one-sided, but I don't see the point in uh, repeating what is well-known. For example, men are attracted to youth, uh, uh, fertility, and uh, nice skin, and so on, and, and in return we provide the, the, what's the point of, the, the point of stressing what females are actually after is to make men aware. That's the, the important point. Um, I, I couldn't help but think that the, the Rocky Mystery You video, at least some of the comments on it, were a, a bit of a lopsided uh, attempt to, well, well, they're basically pot shots at, at me and, and those men who think along my lines, which is fine. You know, all, all is good. Another thing that I'd like to address is the difference between a man going his own way and someone who's still bought into the system. I think a man going his own way tends to be less political about these things. I talk I am, by default, the lowercase l libertarian, but I don't talk about it that much. I try not to. The reason being is that I and others have recognized that, in contrast to other people, I think specifically Mr. Iraqi mystery, that it's not, yes, the state empowers women immensely. The question is, are, in fact, are women indeed femi inherently feministic? And if you look at what the evidence we have on hand, I think we can come to a reasonable conclusion that they are. And I actually talk about this in my previous video about the fallacy of the non-Western woman, that a culture or a, a 
society, state, can put constraints on women's inherently feministic nature, or it can unrelease, unrele it can unrele unrelease, oh God, I can't think straight to that, I'm sorry, it's very early in the morning, it can release the, uh, the floodgates <coughs> to that inherent feminism. Um, there you have it, that's what we have in the West. And I think that's a very fine distinction. Um, I think people who tend to politicize thing, uh, things in MRA and what have you, uh, who stress the whole left-right paradigm a lot more often, uh, will more, more likely attribute feminism to an entirely, entirely uh, state-controlled and uh, state-created model Whereas, it's a question of the chicken or the egg, whereas I think men go in their own way, rightly so, in my, in my view, recognize that feminism is inherent to the female, and the state is merely an accelerator of that. Um, I have to say, I mean, it needs to be said that there is clearly a conflict in MRA between those who tend not to politicize lots of things, uh, directly at least, Barbara Ross and myself, and others, who, who, who really see, the, the, particularly the left, as, a, as the source of feminism, as the source of... But there's no doubt that the uh, that left-wing politics and power that... Um, but the, what about, you know, I've talked about this many times, and it irks me, the right's uh, adherence to, to war and loving, sending young men and men of all ages to their deaths to kill other men. I mean, that's why I'd, I'd like to disavow official politics. Uh, but if feministic nature is inherent, it doesn't really matter what party it belongs to. Yes, obviously the left, uh, in some respects, uh, would, will empower it more. But uh, I, don't, I don't think that's the main issue. Getting to the crux of the matter is, is the question, are women inherently feministic or are they not? If your answer to that is no, then it would, it would follow, at least if, to according to those lines of thought, that viewpoint that, of course, it's a state-controlled, state-manufactured product. And uh, I just don't buy into that. I think the state is and then engenders it, uh, engenders what is already present. So there's that. Finally, the point of being realistic or not, encouraging men en masse to go their own way. Well, in my videos, I make suggestions to my fellow men. I occasionally bring up ideas that may or may not be novel to them. And I see my intention behind my videos as helping my individual men uh, person by person, on a person by person basis. Uh, I'm not going to advocate to any man that he, or at least through, through force of words, you need to go your own way. In real life, I don't chide my friends who continue, in my opinion, foolishly to pursue relationships with women. Um, I let them do their own thing. In fact, I don't even talk about this stuff in real life. I tend to keep away from women as much as possible, which is reasonably easy since the vast the exception of a part-time worker that I've seen once a week, maybe, all my colleagues at work are male, and uh, I have have had superficial friendships with females, but uh, we all know how that goes. They don't put the time, energy, or anything into that, so whatever. No, so my intention is to encourage individuals. People are free to go their own way or not. Uh, that's the whole idea. That I, I would never put constraints on anyone. The question of whether it's realistic or not, thus, is kind of irrelevant, because I don't know if this is a, another pot shot, assuming I'm stupid, that I don't get that most men are never going to go their own way because of the vaginal addiction they suffer from. Um, and that's what it is. I mean, let's call it what it is. I call it addicted to vagina, addicted to whatever else the female appears to offer. I get that we have an inherent 
interest in the feminine, uh, in, in the female. Why do I get it? Because I have that interest too. But, as I said many times, if you have an addiction that's harmful, you might think that addiction should be fed, and you might think mm, you'll feel better, at least for a couple of hours after you smoke the crack pipe. But in the long run, in the long run, it's probably better to kick the addiction rather than to pursue it. Um, ultimately, it seems to me that Pursuing relationships is simply just giving in to the addiction, um, even though the vast, vast majority of men will continue to do these things, and they will suffer for, su suffer for it and suffer from it, and they will pose to themselves questions that have been answered by men going their own way many, many years ago. Why is she acting like that? Oh, I don't understand women. <laughs> So, in summary, mutual, ben mutually benefic beneficial altruistic relationships. Yeah, but at what point have you invested enough? At what point can you take a rest? At what point are you allowed to become ill without being jettisoned out the window? That's the question. Uh, point two is Feminism inherently inherit to female nature. Is it congenital, or is it merely a product of the state? Personally, I think if we don't answer this question adequately, and I, for myself, I've answered it because I think it's inherently uh, inherent to the female. Uh, there will continue to be a, a large divide in the MRA between those who think it's all state manufactured and those who think it's merely the state merely accelerates what's already present. And final point, is it realistic or not? No, probably not realistic. But, as I said, it's better to kick an addiction, recognizing you have it, than to continue partaking in it and, and feeding it. But, Obviously, there's a, you know, and once again, at a final, final point, I could mention that evolutionary psychology speaks of youth and fertility and beauty and so on and so forth as being, uh, being prime male objectives. And, yeah, that's, we, we all know that. Um, but, how many stories have you heard of husbands taking care of their, their, their sick wives long past menopause, long past their, their uh, good-to-consume dates, as it were? <clears throat> Any other way around? Don't know too many of those stories, to be quite honest. You see, men, as part of our addiction, even beyond the beauty and fertility and all that, men on some level cherish or appreciate women in a way women cannot and will never do uh, for men. This is our Achilles heel, and it's an Achilles heel that we need to overcome, because it, we dig our own graves with it. You cannot show quarter to an enemy that shows no quarter to you. Uh, that's, in, in such a case, we're just cannon fodder. One of my subscribers, I don't know from whom this quote is, but very wisely said, you can either understand women or you can love them, but you can't do both. If you want to summarize men going their own way and our so-called extreme views, I think you can summarize it that way. I think we understand women, and that's why we don't love them anymore. Men who continue to love women don't understand women. Anyway, that's, uh, I apologize, this video was a bit incoherent. I literally woke up, saw this video, saw it was addressed to me, and thought, hmm, I really need to respond to this, it's kind of imperative. So I apologize for the occasional incoherency and 
uh, mumbling over words and uh, malapropisms uh, and spoonerisms if any of those came up as well. Uh, thanks for watching.